Hi, this is, this is Scott Garibay, and today I'm going to be talking about 80s Marvel valuations and the American heartland. All right, so let's get into it. All right, so yesterday I went to Shippensburg University to visit my oldest daughter. Our whole family went out, uh, and, and just uh, we brought our bicycle to her, and just, you know, a few odds and ends that, that weren't brought on the first trip. And uh, it was really nice. We had a really nice day, okay? Now, I went to uh, Millersville University in the late 80s. So my daughter going to Shippensburg University is the second generation of Garibays going to um, Pennsylvania State Schools, okay? Now, these are Pennsylvania State Schools, right? Like, you know, I, I, was, I was under the impression that Pennsylvania State School, it's a good school, but it's, you know, it's not the end-all be-all of education. Well, I was wrong. Like, so one of the things I saw yesterday is one, when I went to the Millersville University in uh, in the 80s, everybody knew this is a nice American college. What we have here is good. The service we provide is good. This is good for students. This is good for professors. This is good for the, for the, the town. This is good for everybody, right? It's a good thing, right? Well, what we didn't know was it was great, right? And and that it, that has been now fully understood by every American state school, right? I think, uh, and certainly in Pennsylvania, right? So when we went to see my daughter yesterday, it's the same platform as Millersville University. It's it's a Pennsylvania state school, right? But between 1988, between 1988 when I when I started, and 2017, which is 97, 2007, 2017. That's 30 years later, okay? Um, that's incredible. Like, you would not believe the differences. So, Shippensburg, it was very, very nice when I went to Mosburg. It is a Paris, it is a paradise on Shippensburg campus now, right? It, the, it was an amazing cafeteria. Like, just every single type of food you could want, all you could eat high quality across the board even the squirrely like foodie uh, concerns half of them were addressed it was amazing right um, so it was really something right every building looked like it would have been pulled off the set of Hogwarts it was clean it was incredibly safe there was security everywhere at every single step there was security patrolling the campus there was security like on the streets of the campus automated security systems there was uh, a check-in in in every dorm there was special safety uh, you know amenities on every single room the way the doors locked all of it you had to use your your uh, student id to get in and out you had to sign out that every guest they knew where they were it was immensely safe immensely clean it was like a transformation right and the reason why is what's happened is we are starting, I think we are starting in America to see our true valuation. So let's talk about valuation. Let's talk about valuation. In the 80s, okay, Marvel got in trouble and they, they, they were struggling to sell comic books and they thought their market was comic books, okay? We, we really didn't have comic books. We didn't have movies. They couldn't see what was coming. Right? There were clues of it, but they couldn't see what was coming. I don't blame Marvel for not realizing their valuation then. Right? The point of this video is not to down Marvel for not seeing the valuation of their properties then. The point is for us to look at history and realize that we have our own X-Men. We have our own Spider-Man. We have our own Fantastic Four. All of those properties in the 80s were seen by Marvel as expendable, that they could be sold off to other comp companies because Marvel was struggling, okay? So where, where do we land with this, right? So in the 80s, Marvel got into financial trouble and they sold off the X-Men. They sold off Spider-Man. They sold off, um, they sold off, uh, what was the last one? Fantastic Four. All of those properties are incredibly valuable and Marvel would give so much to get them back now. They're struggling right now to pry those properties from Sony and from all the other places that they've landed, right? And and they really regret those sales. So what I'm saying right now is witnessing what has happened with American universities, with American state colleges, and how they have fully realized their incredible value. And here's the issue, right? Every American state college right now 
You could take every American student and set them in, and put them in barns and forget they exist. And you could fill every American college, every single American state university at minimum, if not every American college, you could fill it with the world's international students and they would be happy as clams and they would pay two or three times what our students would pay to get that education. And they would get a value at triple the cost that an American would pay. And so, and and the, the state schools have realized this. They realized that every state school is an absolute gold mine. It's, it's, a, it's, it's the ability to print money, right? And they did, and it should be like, it, like going to an American college, the way my daughter is right now and the way I got to in the late eighties is paradise. You get to go, you get to learn, you get to think, you get to talk with cool people. You get to eat whatever you want, whenever you eat, you, whenever you want, you get to exercise. You're given a, a wonderful campus and that experience only gets better every single day. Every single day it gets incredibly better, right? And so what I'm saying is that's actually the American heartland. What has happened, you know, between 1988 when I graduated, where there was just a hint at the actual valuation of an American Pennsylvania state school to now, where those, where everybody connected to that state school knows that it is a gold mine. It is a money printing facility, right? They know their valuation. And that's what I'm saying. The American heartland, the valuation on them is immense. American heartland is our American Fantastic Four, Spider-Man, and X-Men. We are in a hard time, and people think that America is struggling, but we're not actually struggling. There's not a real struggle. There's not a need to struggle, and the reason why is we have immense value in America that is completely untapped, right? Like virtually untapped, right? And so here's, so let me, let me convert what I'm saying here into actual, you know, concepts, right? So here's, here's the issue. What is the American heartland? Okay, the American heartland are large tracts of American land that are unpopulated, right? That have very few people living on them, right? In the American heartland, you have things like, and by the way, Shippensburg is surrounded by American heartland. So what, what are the attributes of American heartland? You have uh, people who um, are more likely to have manual skills, know how to hunt, know how to fix a car, know how to, or like, know how to change a tire. That's, that's a better one, right? Because fixing cars can actually be quite technical today. Know how to change a tire than you would on the east or the, on the east or the west coast of America, right? Um, they are people who would be more likely to know the, every word to all of, uh, to our national anthem. Those are all, in my opinion, attributes of the American heartland, okay? And, but the biggest thing is, generally, like when you go through, when you drive through American heartland, you see less people and you see less businesses, right? But one of the things that I see, especially when I've seen the transformation between Morrisville University in 1988 and, the, and Shippensburg University in 2017, I realize we, every single inch of American soil is gold. It's absolute gold. We are the coolest country in the world. We have th we have freedoms and liberties and creativity and, um, and a stronger, in my opinion, economic model than any country in the world. Not by a little bit, by leaps and bounds, right? And so one of the things that's happening is Every, everybody knows the value of Florida. Everybody knows the value of New York. Uh, everybody knows the value of our, of our mega cities. Everybody knows the value of California, right? Well, what I'm saying is we need to right now so that we never sell our Spider-Man, so that we never sell our Fantastic Four, so that we never sell our X-Men. We need to realize that every square inch of American land is a money printing opportunity. We have, we have perfected, in my, we, certainly not perfected, we have built the strongest societal, cultural model that has ever existed. And we need to stop pretending that that, that that is not true. And we need to realize every inch of American land is an opportunity for us as Americans to prosper and to bring in 
people and who people who want to do business with us and give us loans and build businesses with us, we need to immediately, immediately, to not make the same mistakes that Marvel made, we need to stop building on the West and the East Coast of America. We need to stop it. It, it. We have enough valuation there, okay? We have enough successful businesses there. We have enough smart people on those coasts, right? We now need to spread the valuation of America into the heartland and make it so that in every state, in every state of America, we have a New York City, we have a Los Angeles, we have an Atlanta, in every American state. And, and we as Americans need to be soaking up the wealth of the world by just giving them the opportunity to be connected with us, right? And, and, you know, and I see this because one, I've seen the transformation of two Pennsylvania state schools. And I believe those state schools are metaphors for the American heartland. Everybody knew they were good and useful before, but nobody knew they were absolute gold. And now people do, right? And so this is really important. We need to stop building on the left, on, on the west and the east coast. We need to stop building on the left and the right coast of America, right? We need to start building everywhere but and fill strategically. The governors of America need to talk together and say, Arkansas is where all nanotechnology will be built from, day, from going forward. The governors of America should just get together and say, let's take every industry in the world and split it up. Let's own our rock star status, and we're going to take all of it. We're just going to take the best loaners, the best, like, minds, all of it. We're just going to do everything we can to fill, to make every single state in America as rich and prosperous as Florida and New York and California and Seattle and all those places. And we can do it. We can absolutely do it. And from this day forward, everybody needs to know if you are an American and you own American property, that is a gold mine. You should never let it out of your families. You, you know, your family should hold on to that like, like an heirloom, right? You should never let it go. And I really feel this is important that we need to realize American land, every square inch of it is a money printing factory. And by just simply understanding this and realizing that we will never sell our X-Men, every single square inch of, of, America, of American soil is 80s X-Men, 80s, uh, you know, the uh, Fantastic Four, 80s Spider-Man. We, we need to keep it within our country, right? And just allow foreign investors to be connected to us and just get a little bit of our shine for their loans. And I really feel like this is the strongest model to go forward with. Um, because if you look at what's happening with American um, state schools, the transformation is dramatic, absolutely dramatic. Thank you.